Without a doubt, there are some super common EQ problems that you definitely do not want to miss within your mixes. So whether you're talking about the low end frequencies, your mid range frequencies, or those high end frequencies, there are some tall tale signs of an amateur mix, some all too common problems within each of those areas. In this video, we're gonna talk about the low end frequency problems, which are the common culprit for muddy sounding mix, for something lacking that power, or just having a whole blanket kind of over your mix down. So if you're ready to solve those low end frequency problems in your mixes for good, let's dive in. All right, so we're in Ableton once again, and I've loaded up this mix that I have finished, and I thought this would be a good place to showcase some of the most common EQ frequency areas that we come across when we're in a mix. So I'll give you a little taste of this, and then we'll move in to those most common problems. All right, so this is a little bit of a more spooky hip hop beat, uh, but it's around that time of year, isn't it? So let's give it a quick listen. So let's start with the common low mid frequency problems. So instruments and sounds that are dominant in the lower frequencies have a tendency to make your mixes unclear, muffled, and muddy. It kind of sounds like there's a blanket over your whole mix if you don't address this problem. And we tend to call them by a few different names. This can be boominess for towards the lower end of the low end and muddiness for those low mids. Although they mean mostly the same thing, there is a subtle difference between the two. However, they're both part of the category of just that ugly low end, low mid buildup that just clutters up your mix. Let's start with boominess. And boominess is definitely more of a low end problem. For example, if we were to boost this synth bass around 100, 125 hertz, you'd probably get this crazy boom resonating sound from the bass being overloaded by that particular frequency. So let's go ahead and open up our bass group. And we do have various different bass tracks, but let's just check this one out right here and let's go ahead and solo it and listen. Okay, it's kind of like this dubstep bass, this heavy synth bass. And then we also have a sub bass over here. I've popped on an audio issues EQ on the bass track that we were just listening to. And if you haven't checked out the audio issues EQ yet, I definitely encourage you to check it out. Link in the description. It's a super versatile and intuitive EQ tool that also shows you all the language for both what you would normally want to remove and add all in one tool. So definitely check it out. And what I want to do is play that bass track and we're going to boost around 100 150 hertz and listen for that boominess frequency, okay? So notice how it just completely overloads the whole bass sound and it is quite distorted because it is a distorted bass sound, but this area is super easy to overdo in the low end, especially if you have multiple layers that are playing low end frequencies. So let's actually move this EQ to this other sub bass and let's listen to that. Notice that when we boost in that area, because the low frequencies eat up a lot more headroom than higher frequencies, that it immediately starts clipping our output and it starts to distort itself really quickly. And in this mix, I've already paid special attention to make sure that it doesn't accumulate frequencies in this area. But if we solo our bass tracks together, notice how that low end is present but it isn't overdoing it, right? It isn't too present. 
And if we bring something in like our drums, which also has some low end content, we can listen to that together. Right? If I go ahead and boost this area in the sub. Notice how that low end starts eating up our drums. It's actually hard, harder to hear the kick. Right? When we bring it down, it's clear, but there still has that low end power. Right? And this boominess can happen in anything. It can be your bass track. It can be your kick drum. It can be the low end of your vocals. It can be the low end of a piano part or a sample. So definitely look out for that frequency area. So a great way to fix boominess in your mix is to first solo all of your low end instruments together by adding them in one at a time and listen for if there's any masking going on or abnormal frequency buildup. So if you do find a problem in the boomy area in one of your instruments, you can then take an EQ such as the Audio Issues EQ and start boosting in that range until it sounds quite unpleasant and you found the problem area and you can start cutting that out and see how it sounds with your other instruments. So let's actually demo that real quick. So I'm gonna solo my bass, the other sub bass. Let's bring the drums in this piano sample. I'm going to leave the vocals alone for now. And if we just listen to this, everything sounds pretty clear. But if I were to go, let's say in this piano sample, and put an audio issues EQ on there, and boost in this range, So notice that if I boost this range on that piano sample, we start to lose the impact of our snare, of our kick, the bass. And as soon as I tuck this around, right, then we get the power in the low end of the kick and we get the power in the bass back, as opposed to when this is up here. Bring it down. we gain that clarity back in the low end. The next area is called muddiness. And this is a little bit higher than boominess in general, as you can see by this language and where it's where the word is located in the frequency spectrum. So anywhere from 150 Hertz to 200, 300, this area is usually a very common problem area. And when there's too much information here, it's not so much like a blanket over your mix, but it more so feels like lack of clarity like there's not that punch because the energy comes out of the low end of your instruments especially the kick drum the snare uh, your bass if you have any hard-hitting synths or piano parts all the power is in those low mids and if there's just too much information there then it just becomes unclear and muddy for lack of a better word so again if i boost up this area on this piano sample let's listen for how much less clear everything else sounds in the mix bring it down Right, we can do the same things with our drum track. So if I go ahead and boost this muddy area in the drum track, let's listen to how it affects the bass and the piano sample. Notice how it changes the tone of our kick drum. And it kind of steals the attack of that dubstep bass right when we bring it back down here that bass has that like low end growl to it because it's not getting masked by the kick and snare on this drum track keep in mind that muddiness isn't always just a bass instrument problem like we saw many things can create that low end dirt in your mix like even the vocals if you have too much low mid information in your kick drum in your snare bottom in your vocal tracks or even piano samples are a common one um, those can all add to 
boominess or muddiness in your mix if you're not careful. One little caveat I wanna mention is that don't assume that your mix is muddy, even though it's a super common problem. I've run into this problem many times as well that as time goes on, I have a fear of making my mixes muddy. So I've become very careful or almost skeptical to add that frequency into the mix. However, if you take away that frequency on non-problematic areas, it can end up making your mix sound thin because again, the power of your mix will come from the low end. So when you're looking for a mix that really jumps out of the speakers and like the kick drum hits you in the chest and the bass is present in the room, but it isn't muddy or boomy, it's clear, that's because the low end frequencies are balanced. However, if you cut that out, then you can actually take out the power of your mix and it just kind of sounds like there's something missing. So definitely don't assume you always have to cut this area, but just be extra careful with it. That wraps it up for this video. And in the next video, we're gonna move on and talk about the most common problems you'll see in your mid range, which is another super important area to be aware of within your mixes. Stay tuned on the Audio Issues channel for that next video. And if you haven't already, definitely check out the Audio Issues EQ. The link is in the description and I will see you in the next video.